head to Dollar Tree and pick up several of these wall plaques to do these super easy under 10 minute DIYs. Hey friends, I am so grateful and happy to have you here. My name's Melissa, where I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty. So if that is something that you're interested in, I would love and be so grateful if you would stick around and become part of my crafty family. I am seven months pregnant and I have a huge goal of getting to 100K by the time my baby boy is born in October. And I know that we can do that together. So if you guys would do all the youtube -y things, hit that thumbs up, share this out. I would also like to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. And with all that being said, let's jump into today's video. Okay, friends, first things first, whenever you do a Cricut project, you always want to measure the projects that you're going to use first. That way, once you open your Cricut design space, you have the exact measurement you need. So I wanted to show you guys how quick and easy it is to just go right into Cricut design space. You can choose an already made project, meaning you just, you can either click make it or customize and then you can size it down to your project like I'm going to do here. So I click customize and then I insert that into my canvas. Then at the top you're going to see this little bar and an unlock button. So I click the unlock button and then I type in seven and seven. Now you have to play with the sizing because as you can see the bat I didn't really like how it kind of made the bat real skinny so I just kind of played with the sizing a little bit until I found the perfect shape that I personally personally like now I knew that I wanted to add a little you know decoration to my project so I went into design space I found some bats that were like flying bats and I also inserted those into my canvas now this project is more than just the bats so you're gonna see here in a minute once I click customize I'm going to delete all of the other images in my canvas meaning I am only going to keep the bats and I'm going to delete the spider webs and the spiders as well. Now the easiest way that I have found to do this is just to grab your cursor, drag it across all of the images that you want to delete, and then you will select all of them and click the delete button. Next I go to my bats and I knew that this probably would not be enough and I also wanted to fit it on a 12 by 12 mat, which in the end, I had to cut it twice, but that's okay. No big deal. Um, because Cricut Design Space will arrange it on the mat as best as possible. So I wanted more bats, and all you have to do is just click one of them. In the right-hand column, you're going to click Duplicate, and then you can duplicate those and resize those as many times as you like. Now for the third project, I knew that I did not want to use an already made project or image. So what I did was went into the pictures into design space. I typed in happy Halloween and I inserted the wording. Now I should have done this step first, but that's okay. No big deal. So when you're working in design space, the easiest way to figure out how to size your project properly is to insert a shape. So if your um, project is round, you're gonna put a circle. If your project is square like mine is, I inserted a square and then I unlocked it and resized that down to my project. Then I took the Happy Halloween, I put that in the middle of the square, and I also added a spider and like a line so it looked like the spider was hanging from a um, web. 
and then that was it all i did was just delete the square in the background um, if you do not do that your machine will cut out a square for you uh, which really is no big deal however um, i did not want to waste any material and the way that i got the little web or i should say i don't know what you want to call that i guess web that he's hanging from i don't know <laughs> Let me know down in the comments. Um, but the way that I did that was I inserted a square, I unlocked it, and then I just sized that down to be a super skinny line, making sure that I positioned it in between the spider's um, legs. <laughs> Come on, Melissa, speak English today. <laughs> I positioned that right in between the spider's legs, and then I made sure that the line would blend in with one of the letters, so that way you don't have like a wonky cut, or I did not want that line to go through any of my letters, so I wanted it to become one with the letter, if you will. So once I was satisfied with the positioning, then like I said, I removed that square from the background, and then I once again selected the entire image, I welded it together, and then I saved my project. I also saved all the other projects that I resized as well, to my Cricut Cloud because I love to use my cell phone to work with my machine. So once I go from my computer to, um, you know, design space, then I start to DIY my projects. So I personally just think it's much easier to measure all of your projects, go to design space, design everything, and then cut everything. So for these wall plaques, these were a little tricky, I'm not going to lie, but I figured out and I can tell you guys the easiest way to remove these letters. So what you're going to do is take this outside. Don't be an idiot like me. I almost ruined my butcher block. Thank God for my husband who was like, honey, it's no big deal. I can sand them down. I'm not upset. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I'm so sorry, I ruined the counters. But anyway, don't make the same mistake as I did. Take these outside because I ended up letting them set in the sun anyway. Take them outside, pour a little bit of 100% acetone nail polish on them. Let that sit for a while. And the image is on the back. It is not on the front of these wall plaques. So um, make sure that you're paying attention that you are pouring in the right side. And then I let that sit out in the sun to basically bake for about an hour. Once all of the acetone was evaporated, I took it back inside, took my straight edge razor, and I was able, able to just easily scrape away that wording. So now comes the fun part. I feel like the cutting is my favorite part. I just get so excited. I'm like, yes, we're in the home stretch now. So for the um, machine, I use the Cricut Maker 3. You guys, this is my absolute favorite machine. I love that I can use the smart materials with it, which means that you can cut up to 12 feet like Wow, you guys, that is a big game changer, big time saver. And again, that is one of my favorite features. I also love this little tray that you can purchase and it holds your roll of vinyl. That way you don't have a roll sliding all over the countertop. You don't have to pre-measure your piece. Um, that's another uh, thing that I love. Um, sometimes, you know, I am not the best at measuring, so I would cut a piece and it would be the wrong size. And anyway, long story short, you guys, this Cricut Maker 3 is an amazing machine. It's much quicker than the two, and I absolutely love this Cricut machine. So, like I said, I just load up all of my materials. I use the design space from my phone. All you're going to do is open it up, go to the projects in the cloud, and then you can pull them up and cut from your phone. For the bats, um, now this was the only project that did not use vinyl, so I got my light grip mat. I also used glitter cardstock and I cut out all of those bats. Now to remove the bats from the mat, I used my little, um, I forget, is this the spatula tool? I don't know. Yes, the spatula. 
I used my spatula tool to kind of um, maneuver those off of the mat. That's why you want to use light grip when you are working with paper or cardstock. That way your uh, project does not rip or stay on the mat. So for the second cut of the bats, I just used a plain piece of cardstock. I wanted some of the bats to be glittery, some of them to just be a matte color. So once my bats were all cut out, I set those aside, and now we're going to weed out our other images. Now the easiest way to weed that I have found is just to uh, use your picker tool and grab from the corner and pull off as much, we as much vinyl as you can. Once you have the majority of your vinyl off of your um, image, <laughs> then you're going to go in and use your picker tool and just remove any little pieces that were left behind. I then pull out my transfer tape and I like to lay my transfer tape down sticky side up and then lay my image face down onto the sticky side of the transfer tape. However, um, many different people do it different ways. So you do what makes you most comfortable. Now I can say with the new smart cutting material, the backing is thick, so it is a little bit hard to get that vinyl released, but I have found that if you flip it once again and pull the backing sheet away from the transfer tape, then it comes up much easier or my favorite trick is to heat up the back of the smart material with your heat gun or your blow dryer and then as you're pulling it up making sure you are smoothing or you're burnishing it so it comes up nice and smoothly next i lay my image down on our little decor pieces this one was a little or the transfer tape was a little too tall so i just cut that down so that it would fit i burnished that down to our or to our decor piece and then i pulled that transfer tape up i have had the best luck when i pull up my transfer tape to pull it so it's flat with the part that is still sticking and um the vinyl just stays back much nicer that way next i lay down my images on this glitter cardstock that i had in my stash and also this buffalo check scrapbook paper and i cut those down to size and then i just glue those to the back of our little decor pieces Now the bats are their own project because I just want to have these up like coming off of my entryway table. However, I thought that they would be the perfect add-on to these wall plaques. So for the bats, all I did was just score them in the places that I thought would look really cool to bend and have them flying. And I did that with the back of my picker tool. I had a I have a stylus tool somewhere. I just couldn't find it at the time, so I used what I had, no big deal. And all I did was score it, and then I used my fingers to just bend them so that they look like they were flying. Once I was done those, then I hung them up on the wall, and that was it, you guys. I had the bats coming off of the images. I absolutely love the way that this turned out, and let me know down in the comments what you guys think. So for the last and final project, you guys, this one was so, so simple. I just took our little happy Halloween image that we created. I took it off of the backing sheet and laid it down on our project. Trans or I always want to say transferred. <laughs> I'm so used to using chalk couture that it just comes out that way. So what I meant to say was I laid my transfer tape down on our little project pulled back that transfer tape and that was it for this one you guys i hung that one up on the wall i actually love that there's no background on this one i'm kind of upset i wish i would have left the other ones plain i don't know let me know down in the comments you guys do you like the orange glitter and the buffalo check um scrapbook paper or do you prefer the image with no backing so thank you guys so much for being here thank you for stopping by 
I appreciate every single one of you more than you could ever know. And I just want you to know that if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning. You are worthy. You literally can do anything you set your mind to. If you can visualize it, you can be it, you can do it. Don't ever forget it. With that being said, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Share it out. It really helps my channel to grow. You guys know we have a huge goal of getting to 100K by October when baby boy is born. And I can't do that without your help. So do all the YouTube-y things. I also want to thank Cricut for sponsoring today's video. I appreciate it so much. Don't forget, you can always text my number if you need any ketone information, 302-204-0881. And until next time, guys, I love you all so much. Bye. Check out the videos that are popping up here to your left while you're waiting on my next upload or join the DIY fam here to your right.